What is up, YouTube? This is Zach and Grace, and we're over here in the Historian Center, where Johan is going to be showing us a little bit about the history of the Kef brand. Stay tuned. So, Kef, because of the way we made our drawers, um, were got the BBC contract and were asked to build this loudspeaker, but Raymond wasn't interested. Um, but the BBC insisted that all the drivers were KEF. So here is a B110 T27 tweeter, uh, world famous in the world of audiophiles, the crossovers. So anybody making this mini monitor, in other words, assembling it, had to use KEF drive units. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands were built because never meant as a as a music loudspeaker. It was adopted by audiophiles as being absolutely lovely sounding. It was more by trial and error the design, you know, use of proper materials and 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 all this. This was more hit and miss, um, unlike the good solid uh, software led science which George applied. And we move through the ages to like probably one of the most famous models, KEF 105. This was a sensation when it came out. This was the first loudspeaker to have separate enclosures for tweeter, mid-range and bass. Um, sensation. Um, and the reference series and the methodology of building reference. Here you see the team, some of the engineering team who invented the reference methodology um, in the mid 70s came up. Um, here you can see elements of design. This was way ahead of its time. This is from the late 70s. But look, molded, cloths around, kind of, you can see way ahead of its time. Mm, they want to get away from just a boring square box. Um, Unicubes, our central technology, first appeared in this loudspeaker here, which was called the C35. We weren't too good at marketing there, there's no idea why call it C. Um, but Unicube with the tweeter in the middle of the mid range, that was patented in 1989. Um, all frequencies from one point. Um, and so UniQ was born and made it way, made its way into the um, into the reference series. Home theater, center channel. In the early 90s, you know, her home theater was born and um, Kef had the audacity to bring out the Model 100. Normally, you, it was just like an add on the center channel mm -hmm. and you expect to pay a hundred bucks for a center channel. But we know it's the most important because most yeah. of the information comes out. We all know this nowadays. But uh, this was about 600 bucks in the day. It's outrageous. Wow. But because UniQ spreads the sound so wide and even, it's made for home theatre. And we move on. Specialist THX series. You can see more and more elements of design. Curves beautifully thought out creeping in. Um, to some oddities. This was a specialty wide baffle monitor. Uh, a little bit like, for example, it, it, it's very good. A lot of people who don't get it go, ooh, why is it so, you know. But it's form follows function. And this was the Kef Maidstone, which was actually specially intended for the Japanese market, Japanese audio files, but the country which sold most was Portugal. It was really weird. We had one <laughs> dealer there who sold loads of them. Um, another really very cool. famous model, the famous Kef eggs. <laughs> um, you know, satellite, 5.1 system. These things were a sensation when they came out because normally you buy five crappy little satellites which are just awful. These things, they're like a hand grenade. <laughs> They're made of solid aluminium, not aluminium, aluminium. Um, and uh, that's how you say yeah. it. 
Cool. Um, so so th th we sold hundreds and hundreds of thousands of those. Uh, moving on to other reference. Some wacky stuff. Uh, and I like this, the this is like the Christmas edition. Um, yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, I mean, you mentioned the other British company. Very good. British loudspeaker company. What happened company. there? Did they steal you? Uh, they brand? copied us. They um, did, didn't they? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, you heard it here there first, guys. Um, <laughs> this, the mighty Muon, which you saw, this was this is the original prototype for the Muon. Um, so this functions like a Muon. This was the engineer's prototype, but then it was given shape and styling. Mm -hmm. um, that was Project Austin, a bit like James Bond. So there you go. Hmm. Nice. What are these here? History in one room. Ah, I forgot this. This loudspeaker here. Thank you for pointing out. This is the KEF 10 reference 104 Mark II. This set KEF on its path in America. These were top, top, top sellers in America. Why? Because they were efficient. They had tons of bass. Where's the bass drivers? They're inside and they're force cancelled. Um, but they were very efficient, went boom really nicely, which a lot of Americans yeah, like. Yeah, like that. Um, yeah, we like the boom. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, we sold tens of thousands of these, and this is a reference loudspeaker. Oh. So there you go, thanks for pointing out. Um, this is just different generations of it? Uh, no, d different finishes. Um, this is a, an early reference model. I mean, if you look at uh, the KEF website, www.kef.com, you, uh, you've got a little section deep in the bowels of the KEF website where you can read all about it, if that's your thing.